Please write them on a note card located in the back of the pew or in front in front of you. We will come around and pick them up following the service. Oh, I'm sorry, the sermon. Um, also, the offering had, was not included in the bulletin. We will not be passing the offering plate, but there is a table between the pews back there for your offering. Uh, you can put that in the offering when you leave today. Let's begin our worship by singing together. God welcomes all, and we'll sing it twice. offers us a promise of life everlasting. Please turn to him 438 Frock of Ages. <laughs>
Christ is the one who gives us his peace, which surpasses all of our understanding. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace be with you. And also with you. Oh God, by your Holy Spirit, tell us what we need to hear and show us what we ought to do to obey Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The first lesson to... Oh, your turn. Oh, it's my turn. Hang on. All right. Do you guys want to come forward and talk to me? <laughs> so, okay, so the two greatest commandments, they're really simple. Let's see, because I'm going to say them, and then we're, we're going to say them together. Are you ready? Number one, love God. Number one, love God. Say that one. Number one, love God. And number two, love others. Great, so let's say them together. Number one, love God. Number two, love others. You've got it. You've got this whole Christianity thing. Because that's basically it. So how do we show that we love God? How do we love God? How do you love somebody? Do you, do you talk to them? The people that you love, what do you do? Do you talk to them? Yes. You play with them? Yeah. Yeah. Not really your mom? Okay, well, that's cool. She does have a baby, so she's a little busy right now. Okay, so do you think you can talk to God? Yes, how do we talk to God? We pray, exactly. And now, when you're playing on the playground or you're playing at home, do you think that that's a way to love God too? I think so, because what can we do when we play with other people? We can be nice, we can share, do we share? Are you a sharing bunch? Yes. Yes, very good. And so that's another way that we love God, but it's also a way that we love others. How do you show other people that you love them? Hug them. Hug them? Yes, that's awesome. What else do you do? Are you nice to them? Smile? Perfect. You smile people, you hug them, you're nice to them. You only say nice things, right? You don't say mean things. You think you can do all of that? Yes. Because what are the commandments? Number one, love God. And number two, love others. Perfect. All right, let's stand up and say our prayer. All right, get yourself some room. Because we've got to move a little bit. You ready? Okay. I thank you, God, for this day. I thank you, God, for this day. For everything above me. For everything below me. For everything around me. For everything in me. I thank you, God, for this day. Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. Our song for today is Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keep faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. 
the Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. 
And seeing that Jesus answered them well, the scribe asked Jesus, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength. And to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whenever I hear the word heaven, I cannot help but hear Fred Astaire singing in my head. Heaven, I'm in heaven, and my heart beats so that I can hardly speak. And I seem to find the happiness I seek when we're out together dancing cheek to cheek. I don't think this is what Jesus had in mind when he told the scribe that he is not far from the kingdom of God. But what do you think of when you think of heaven or of the kingdom? Maybe streets of gold or singing praises. We all have a lot of different images when it comes to the kingdom, and here Jesus offers us one Today we have one of the most favorite, famous parts of scripture when Jesus gives the great commandments. We're charged with doing two things, loving God and loving others. It's that simple. It's that difficult. Some days it is the hardest thing in the world to do. So why do we do it? Why do we keep on trying to live up to these commands? Well, because Jesus told us to. And not only did he tell us to do this, but we are holding them in our hearts and we are close to the kingdom. What Jesus is proclaiming in these two commandments is calling us back to the gifts of the Ten Commandments in the Hebrew Scriptures. In the book of Exodus, the Hebrews are wandering around in the wilderness after God has saved them from slavery in Egypt. And God calls Moses to go onto the mountain to receive the tablets of commandments. These are not just rules to live by, but these tablets are the formation of the people of God, of a community, not just a wandering group in the wilderness. Communities are formed around a set of standard behavior that everyone agrees to. Think of our lives and the laws of our government. We are living together under this agreement of behavior. But the Ten Commandments go further. They not only discuss how we are to live together in an orderly way, but they discuss how we are to approach God. This is a connection that Jesus' audience would have immediately made. Jesus began with a phrase that was incredibly important to the Jewish faith, the Shema, Shema Yisrael. Hear, O Israel. As soon as the audience heard this phrase, they immediately connected their laws with this new law that Jesus is about to give them. Except Jesus' law isn't new. Let's think back to the Ten Commandments. One, God is God. Two, no other gods before the one true God. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Sabbath, people, Sabbath. Honor your parents, no murder, no adultery, no theft, no bearing false witness, no coveting. If we think about it, commandments 1 through 4 relate to how we respond to God's love, how we love God. And commandments 5 through 10 are about how we live in community with one another, how we are supposed to love God, and how we are supposed to love one another. Jesus is summing this up and calling us to live into a new community, into the kingdom that God has created for us all in heaven. These commandments go beyond how we live together here on earth, but ask what is the ideal that God has called us to? What is the ideal God has created us for? 
if we are all our best selves and we truly love God with our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our strength, how does that play out in society? To follow only the love God commands is to only half follow the Ten Commandments. In order to love God properly, we must love our neighbors, even the neighbors with whom we disagree. <clears throat> this is our calling. Loving God and loving others, and nothing less. Today we are about to remember the saints who have joined the church triumphant and we are remembering those who have gone before us, who have taught us how to love God, who have taught us how to treat others. We learn from every person we come into contact with and as we celebrate the lives of those we care for, we remember the love they gave to God through the love that they showed to each of us. It is in showing this love that we are part of the new community that we draw near to the kingdom. As we all live together and strive to follow the commandments of Jesus, we form a new union with each other, bound together by the Holy Spirit. This is what it is like to draw near to the kingdom, to love God, to love others, and to be bound by the Holy Spirit. This is a foretaste of heaven. So what does it look like to love God and love others? Loving God is knowing that God is God and we are not, and we have to get over ourselves and get out of the way. We are not at the same level that our Lord is, but we are called to bow down and worship. Loving God is following the commands that God has given us, not to make graven idols or put things, persons, events, what have you, before God. Loving God is Sabbath, is rest in God's presence, and loving God looks like loving one another. But let's go beyond the negatives of the Ten Commandments and look at the positive things we can do to build one another up. Let's go beyond don't murder and look for ways that we can enrich the lives of others. Let's think beyond don't steal and ponder what we can give to one another, time, energy, love, food, kindness. Let's go beyond the minimum and look towards the maximum ways that we can love. Let's move in that direction. If we have faith in God, we move towards obedience. If we truly believe that Jesus is the Christ, then we obey the commandments he has given to us. We love God and we love one another. It's that hard, and it's that simple all at once. So let's do it together. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In Paul's letter to the Hebrew, he writes, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that has been set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Therefore, lift your drooping hands, strengthen your weak knees, and make straight paths for your feet, so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Friends, we celebrate All Saints Day every year on November 1st, and we lift up those who have died and are united with God those who have earned their eternal rest. We celebrate their lives as they continue to surround us, nurturing our faith even now as they did when, we were, when they were here on earth together. And we rejoice because we know that death is not the end, but the beginning of our journey together, for we will be united at the throne of God. Together, as we remember the saints who have helped us form their lives of righteousness 
and mercy, let us give thanks as we pray. God of the ages, we praise you for all your servants who have done justice, loved mercy, and walked humbly with their God. For apostles and martyrs and saints of every time and place who in life and death have witnessed to your truth, we praise you, O God. For all your servants who have faithfully served you, witnessed bravely and died in faith, who are still shining lights in the world, we praise you, O God. For those no longer remembered, who earnestly sought you in darkness, who held fast their faith in trial and served others, we praise you, O God. For those we have known and loved, who by their faithful obedience and steadfast hope have shown the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, we praise you, O God. Today we especially remember Reggie Bates, Arlene Bennett, Bonnie and David Boyd, Dixie Buchanan, James Canfield, Anne and Martin Crutchfield, Don Davenport, the Reverend Dr. David Dyer, Gloria Evans, Bill Fisher Jr., Catherine B. Fisher, Diana Fiscus, Guy and Rosemary Friend, Susan Gabbard, Roland Higgins, Phil Holder, Rita Jacquet, Shirley Johnson, Gerald Robert Kimmel, Mark Robert Kimmel, Ruth Ann Kimmel, Dar Miller, Dewey Mishner, Dub Myers, Esther Nixon, Ella Mae Sheshi, Helen Shirk, Philip Thomas, Max and Mary Lynn Watkins, Alta Webb, and everyone who has died as a result of COVID. <coughs> Keep us grateful for their witness, and like them, eager to follow in the way of Christ. Then at the last, bring us with them to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Through Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, please sing as we please stand as we sing hymn 203, Yesu Yesu. And I will also be coming around to create to collect your prayer cards. Purpose. We are convinced that 
that they neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This would normally be the time when we would do our offering, but as I told you, the offering is back on the table back there. If you would like to put your offering in, right now you can do that. I'm going to read a prayer of dedication. Gracious and loving God, we present these offerings before you, asking that they may be a blessing unto others, and that in our giving we may draw nearer to you. Help us to seek the treasures of heaven rather than the things of earth. For our source of hope and confidence is in the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Let us go to God together in prayer. Dear Lord, on this day as we remember those who have joined the church triumphant, we thank you for those persons you have poured your spirit into that then set about protecting your church. We thank you that you are still at work in the life of the church, reforming us, reshaping us, remaking us into your image. One of the ways we reflect your image, Lord, is how we care for one another with love, care, and prayer. We pray for those who are in the hospitals today. We pray for those at home with illnesses, pains, and are recovering from treatments and surgeries. We pray for those in nursing homes and those who are homebound. We pray for their families during this time. We pray for those who are facing death. We pray for those who have died and for those who have grieving, who are grieving. We pray for their doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and caretakers. Lord, may we reflect your image in our love, care, and prayer that we put to action for these, your children. Today, we pray especially for Blake and his sister, Donna, and her son, Blake, who passed away. Marita, for Melinda's cousin, Rick Toomey's family. For Zoe Farrell, Lois and Lote's family. For Stephen and Elizabeth Pollard. Matt Fisher, Marley Bogan, Clay Terry, Brian Fitzmorris, David Butterfield, William Fisher, Terry Lothry, Elizabeth Lothry, Selena Peer, Frank Lothry, for Val Belden, Melinda Carpenter and family, Catherine Brizzy, Phyllis Mitchell, Monica Short, Jerry Woods, Charlie Friedman, Barbie Mellinger, David Shaver and family, Bennett Gladden, Mark Carter, Linda Douglas, Amy Scroggins, the Fred Johnson family, Wendell Phillips, the Paula Hunter family, for Daniel Westcott, and for the Talley family. We also lift up those to you we name in the silence of our hearts. We reflect your image in how we love, care, and pray for the world. We pray for those around the world who as Christians face imprisonment and martyrdom. We pray for those whose countries are torn by civil war. We pray for those living in poverty. We pray for those who live in starvation. Lord, may we put our actions into love, care, and prayers for the world. Lord, we pray for your church that we would be a beacon of hope, grace, love, and light in the world. May our open doors reflect your open arms to all. May our arms and hands reaching out to those in need reflect your love for all. May our forgiveness of one another reflect your forgiveness for all. We pray these things in the name of the Holy One who taught us to pray together, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, please stand as we sing our closing hymn, number 730, I Sing a Song of the Saints of God. Sunday, we will fall back. It is the best night of sleep of the year because you're going to get an extra one. And then be up here, please, at 9.15 in the morning for us to come together for Sunday school followed by worship at 10. Okay, I think we are ready now. Um, we are going to use worship as our opening prayer for this meeting, and I declare that we do have a quorum present. So on behalf of the session, I would like to present a nominating committee for the year 2021. It's their job to nominate the new class of elders and to make sure that we have a secretary and a treasurer for the session. The nominating committee of this congregation is made up of two active serving elders and three members of the congregation. We have the following five people who have agreed to serve. Barbara Matthews, Perla Macias, Joe Pennington, Billy Ann Myers, and Barbara Monroe. As per the Book of Order, I must ask, do we have any nominations from the floor? And if you are about to nominate someone other than yourself, please be sure that they have agreed to do this. <laughs> okay, no nominations from the floor. Friends, this comes from session, which we're counting as committee, so it needs no second. So all of those in favor of this